evening everyone we're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video i'm coach spivey and before we begin i want to give a shout out to my entire third period class so shout out to jalarian reese andre griffin denzel jones tori finney Taquaria solomon jamon jackson jacoby hollinshed christian finney carmen patterson savon evans eric bowden moesha williams Miracle Woodford, Jarnice Johnson, Naira Darby, Amia Carter, Deontay Watts, and Adina Marsh. I got a great group of kids, and this is the reason why I do what I do. So let's go ahead and get started on this speed and velocity video. So first things first, what is motion? Motion is a change of position of an object with respect to time. So if you notice, the skateboarders started off started off in one place and then they ended up in another place so changing their position with respect to time and then what is a frame of reference a frame of reference is the reference or the starting point this is basically the point from which the object is moving or starting from so for example this person starts at the start line and unfortunately they don't get much further past that but the frame of reference is the start line at this track meet Next, we take a look at distance, and distance measures how far it is between two objects and or how far an object has moved. So, for example, if we look from Macon to Atlanta, it is approximately 84 miles. So, we go from Macon to Atlanta, this is 84 miles. That's the total distance. And then we take a look, going from Macon to Savannah, that would be approximately 166 miles. So this is how far an object or how far you have traveled from one place to another. That would be your distance. And then displacement is a change of an object's position. So the question is, how far are you from your original starting point? So this also includes a direction. And for example, we have north, south, east, west, away from, or towards. And our displacement can actually be less than our actual distance. So we'll show you that in the next slide. So let's take a look at distance versus displacement. And in our example, a man moves from point A to point B, then to point C, and then finally to point D as shown in the opposite in this diagram right here. And then we're going to find the distance and displacement traveled by the man. We'll notice he travels a distance of 50 meters from A to B, then another 30 meters from B to C, and then another 50 meters from C to D. So all we have to do is add up our distance. So 50 plus 30 is going to give us 80. And then 80 plus 50 is going to give us 130. So the man traveled a total distance of 130 meters. Now let's take a look at our displacement. So the man started here. This was his start point or his frame of reference. And then he actually ended up here at point D. But if we notice, he's actually only 30 meters, he's actually only 30 meters away from his starting point. So if you notice the, dis the difference between distance and displacement, distance asks the question, what is the total distance this person traveled? And it shows it right here, 130 meters. And displacement asks, how far is the person from their original starting point? So the man is actually only 30 meters away from his original starting point. So that's the difference between distance and displacement. So now let's take a look at our first check for understanding. You're going to write the correct vocabulary word by each description. And your vocabulary words are frame of reference, motion, distance, and displacement. You have one minute to fill in the following blanks, and we'll begin that one minute starting now. Go ahead and pause the video. So now let's see how you do it on your first check for understanding. Number one, Jamar traveled close to 900 miles to get to Dallas, Texas. So 900 miles is talking about the amount of distance he traveled. So number one would be distance. Number two, Deontay started at home and drove to Northeast High School. So his start place was home. So his frame of reference would be home. So number two is our frame of reference. Number three, Adina is at least 15 miles from home. So home is always where we want to start it. But how far is she from home? Adina is at least 15 miles from home. So that's talking about her displacement. And then number four, Cornelius threw the football. 
And since the football is moving, the football is in motion. So remember, motion is a change in the object's position with respect to the time. So now let's take a look at speed versus velocity. Speed is how fast an object moves in a certain amount of time. So for example, the car is going 35 miles per hour. And that means that for every hour that car is traveling 35 miles. And then if we look at velocity, velocity is how fast and the direction an object moves in a certain amount of time. So let's look at our key differences between speed and velocity. Speed talks about how fast, but velocity talks about how fast and the direction. So that's a big difference. Speed only talks about how fast, but velocity talks about how fast and the direction. And velocity also always includes a reference point or a starting point. And then the direction is also referred to as a vector. So direction is a vector quantity. And then so example, the car is going 35 miles per hour north from Walmart to Northeast High School. 35 miles per hour is talking about how fast. And then the direction is north. And our reference point or our starting point is starting, we're starting from Walmart. There are three types of speed. First, let's start off with constant speed, which constant speed is a speed at a constant rate. So for example, 65 miles per hour for one hour. So if you're on the interstate with your mom or dad and they set the car on cruise control, they are setting the car for a constant speed. And then we take a look at average speed, which is the distance traveled over the total time to travel that distance. So for example, the distance from school to home over how long it takes to get there. And then we have instantaneous speed. This is how fast you're going or something's going at a certain time. So for example, traveling right now at 70 miles per hour. So this right here, this picture right here is showing a police officer holding what we call a radar gun. And what a radar gun is designed to do is calculate or determine a person's speed at a certain point of time. Now let's take a look at our speed, aka velocity equation. So our formula is V equals D over T, and you can also see it as S equals D over T. They mean the same thing. Velocity equals distance over time, or speed equals distance over time. And you use both to solve for velocity or speed. And then if you look right here to the right, here's our velocity and speed triangle. So for example, if we wanted to solve for distance, we would put our finger over the D and they would leave us with speed times time, like shown over here. Say if we want to solve for time, we would put our finger over T and they would show us distance divided by speed. And then if we want to solve for speed or velocity, we put our finger over the S and they would show us distance divided by time. So V equals speed or velocity, so the unit would be V. And then our unit D stands for distance, and the units can be meters for M, or we can have miles, or we can have kilometers, which would be shown, which would be shown as KM. And then our unit would be time, T equals stands for time. Then our units can be seconds or NS, or hour, which the abbreviation would be HR. And then our unit for velocity or speed would be meters per second, so m slash s, or it could be miles per hour, mph, or you can see it as kilometers per hour. And then it may be different depending upon the problem, so your units can change, so be careful and make sure you look at your problems very carefully. So now let's take a look at our speed and velocity practice problems, and we'll do these problems together just so you can get a feel for how to complete them. So number one, what is the speed of a rocket that travels 9,000 meters in 12.12 .12 seconds? The first thing we're going to do is see what we're solving for. So it's asking what is the speed? So right here, I'm going to put a question mark because we don't know what the speed is. But it said it travels 9,000 meters. 9,000 meters is talking about our distance. So I put a D right there to signify distance. And then 12.12 .12 seconds, that is talking about time. So I put a T right there. So we're solving for a velocity or we're solving for speed. So we'll use this formula right here. So speed equals distance divided by time. Our distance is 9,000 meters. Our time is 12.12 .12 seconds. 
and we would use our handy dandy calculator. Let me access mine. So 9,000 divided by 12.12, .12, and that would give us a speed of 742.6 meters per second. And the way I got my units right here, I look, I have 9,000 meters and I have seconds, so that gives us meters per second. Now let's look at number two. What is the speed of a jet plane that travels 528 meters in four seconds? So we're looking at, we're solving for speed because it asks, what is the speed? So question mark right here. And it says it travels 528 meters. 528 meters, that's our distance right there. And then in four seconds, four seconds is actually talking about our time. So our time is four seconds. So we're asking, what is the speed? So we're going to use this formula again. Speed equals distance divided by time. So we'll take 528 meters and divide it by four seconds, and that will give us 132 meters per second. Let's look at number three. After an impact involving a non-functioning satellite, a paint chip leaves the surface of the satellite at a speed of 96 meters per second. So they actually gives us, give us our speed. So we'll put that here, 96 meters per second. And it says after 17 seconds, 17 seconds is going to refer to our time. How far has the chip landed? How far is asking what is the distance or total distance the chip has landed? So that's what we're solving for. We're solving for distance. So if we look, our formula to solve for distance is going to be speed times time. So we're going to be looking at 96 meters per second times 17 seconds. Now, before we actually put our answer in, let's go ahead and look at the units we have a light between our speed and our time. If we notice we have our speed or we have our time in seconds in common. So we cross those out and it leaves us with our meters or our distance. So our answer is when we multiply 96 times 17, it's going to be 1,632 meters. So let's take a look at that again. We got our speed, we got our time, we did not know our distance, but our formula for distance is speed times time. And before we multiply those two, we cross out our light units and our light units were seconds, which left us with meters. That makes sense because distance is measured in meters. So now let's take a look at number four. The space shuttle Endeavour is launched to altitude of 500,000 meters. 500,000 meters is a reference to distance. How do we know? Because meters is a unit of distance above the surface of the Earth. The shuttle travels at an average rate of 700 meters per second. Remember, meters per second is the unit for velocity or speed. So we're filling in right here, 700 meters per second. And so now since we have these two variables, we now we know that we're solving for time. And let's take a look to see if we're correct. It asks how long will it take for Endeavour to reach its orbit? How long is talking about time? So now we look at our formula for time. Our formula for time is distance divided by speed. But before we do our distance divided by speed, let's go ahead and cross out our like units. So our like units is meters so we're going to cross out both these m's and that's going to leave with uh, leave us with our seconds which is our time so now let's put in our calculator 500,000 divided by 700 and that's going to give us a time of 714.28 seconds now let's look at number five how long will your trip take? How long is asking how much time? So we're looking for time. So let's put that question mark here. How long will your trip take in hours if you travel 350 kilometers at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour? 350 kilometers, that's a measurement for distance. So 350 kilometers at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour, and that's talking about our speed right here, so we'll fill that in. 
So let's go ahead and cross out our light units now while we can. So our light units are kilometers. So we'll cross out kilometers here and kilometers here. This makes sense because it's asking how long will the trip take in hours. So we know our unit is going to be hours. And since we're solving for time again, we're going to use our time formula. So time equals distance divided by speed. So we'll take 350 kilometers divided by 80 kilometers per hour and that's going to give us a time of 4.375 hours now it's time for our second check for understanding you have two minutes to complete the following problems and we can begin those two minutes starting now go ahead and pause the video let's see how you do it on your second check for understanding number one what is the speed of a car that travels 220 meters in 8.2 seconds? It asks what is the speed, so that's what we're solving for. 220 meters is going to be our distance. 8.2 seconds is going to be our time. And since we're solving for speed, we're going to use this formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. So 220 meters divided by 8.2 seconds, that should give us a speed of 26.82 meters per second. Number two. What's the speed of a jet plane that travels 620 meters in four seconds? Once again, we're solving for speed. Our distance is 620 meters. Our time is four seconds. And then we use the speed formula distance divided by time. 620 meters divided by four seconds gives us a speed of 155 meters per second. Number three. After an impact involving a non-functioning satellite, a paint chip leaves the surface of the satellite at a speed of 102 meters per second. After 11 seconds, how far has the chip landed? How far is asking the distance? So we're solving for distance. Our speed is 102 meters per second. Our time is 11 seconds. So we're going to use the formula to solve for distance. So it's going to be speed times time. But before we solve for distance, we're going to go ahead and cross out our light units. So we have those seconds that are in common and we're left with meters. So when we do speed times time, 102 times 11 is going to give us 1,122 meters. Number four, the space shuttle Endeavor is launched to altitude of 320,000 meters above the surface of the Earth. The shuttle travels at an average rate of 500 meters per second. How long will it take for Endeavor to reach its orbit? How long is asking about our time? So that's what we're solving for. Our distance is 320,000 meters. Our speed is 500 meters per second. So in order to solve for time, we're going to use distance divided by speed. 320,000 divided by 500. That's going to give us 640 seconds. And remember, we crossed out our light units, which were the meters. That's what left us with seconds. And number five, how long will your trip take in hours if you travel 480 kilometers at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour? How long is talking about time again? So we're going to do distance divided by speed. Our distance is 480 kilometers. Our time is 70 kilometers per hour. If we cross out our light units, that's going to be our kilometers. And so it's going to be 480 divided by 70. That's going to give us 6.85 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial over speed and velocity was helpful. I'm Travis Spivey signing off with Jordan Spivey. Peace, and y'all have an awesome, wonderful day.